Hello SciTech fans, this is Frugal from YouTube channel Frugal Sim, and I am buried today behind cool boxes of SciTech awesomeness. In the last video that I did for SciTech, we looked at entry-level simulation. So how to get started and to get an, an entry-level or mid-range joystick that would do everything you need it to do to get up in the air flying or in space shooting. And I said that in the next chat in the next video channel, in the next video, we would take a look at the higher end stuff. So here we are taking a look at yokes and rudder pedals, or more precisely, yokes and throttle quadrants and rudder pedals. Now, SciTech do a range of both of these. These are my personal preferences. I'm using the SciTech Combat rudder pedals, but whichever ones you get, the Combat pedals, the Pro Flight pedals, or the Cessna Pro Flight pedals, it doesn't matter. All the tips you're gonna see in this video apply to them all. I am also using the Cessna Pro Flight yoke, or the SciTech Pro Flight Cessna yoke. Catchy name. There are two versions of this. There's the Pro Flight Yoke and the Cessna one. I just got the Cessna one, so I'm gonna be using that. But again, everything you're gonna see in this video applies to both yokes and all rudder pedals that SciTech do. So without further ado, let's get rid of these boxes and I'll talk you through each of these bits of kit and then we'll go to a simulator and hook them up. All right, so the first bit of kit is this. These are rudder pedals. If you've never seen them before, they're a little bit weird. They look like the pedals you have in your car, but they function very differently. First of all, pressing on one, or moving one, it's hard to do on a table, moving one actually moves the other one a proportionate amount. So you see they slide backwards and forwards. That's the first thing. The second thing is these. These pedals actually press down, just like a car. Let me explain the functions here. The moving pedals are for two things. On the ground, they steer the aircraft. So on modern aircraft that have hydraulic nose wheel steering, moving these pedals will actually turn the nose wheel and actually steer the aircraft. On the older aircraft, like Spitfires, Hurricanes, it won't turn the wheels at all. The wheel at the back of the aircraft is free castering, a bit like the wheels on a shopping cart, where you push the cart, the wheels turn. Same thing, except moving the pedals will move that rudder at the back of the plane, deflecting wind, and then the aircraft will just naturally pivot. In the air, they do a similar thing. They yaw the aircraft, which is to say they slide the nose of the aircraft left and right. I happen to have an aircraft here, a Blue Angels F-18. Now, when you move rudder pedals, the tail, the rudders on the tail here twist either side, left and right, left and right, depending on how you press the pedals, and that will cause the aircraft to yaw like this. You see that? It just slides the nose left and right. It doesn't do the classic Top Gun style bank and roll turn, just slides the nose left and right. We'll get onto why that's necessary in a second once we look at the yoke. But that's rudder pedals. All SciTech rudder pedals have a number of common features. First, a tensioner in the center of them. You can tighten and slacken the amount of tension that you have to apply to move these pedals here. Most of them are also adjustable in the foot area. These combat pedals have a little dial on the side that you can turn to change the angle of the pedals. The pro flight pedals, you can lengthen or shorten the area of, of the, I guess it's a foot holder, the bit where your foot goes. You can lengthen it and shorten it based on how small or large your feet are. Let's take a look now at the yoke and the throttle quadrant. Okay, so here is the SciTech Pro Flight Cessna yoke. As I said, it's newer, more up to date, a little bit more slicker, high end than their standard Pro Flight yoke, but the features are basically the same. You have two handles here that you use to control the aircraft. I'll show you how they work in a second, along with a selection of buttons and knobs and hats. These buttons are programmable. All of them are programmable. So for example, I would use these ones here for trim, either pitch trim or aileron trim or rudder trim over here. There's a hat, like a joystick, little joystick here that you can move, which you would typically use to look around, change your point of view in the cockpit. Also two buttons on the front here that you can use for dis disengaging the autopilot or push to talk if you're online. Also comes with a throttle quadrant, this thing, this scary looking thing with three levers. Now these three levers are really designed for something like a Cessna. The first lever, the black one, is your throttle. Simple enough, it's like the gas pedal in a, in a car. Increase it to get more power, decrease it for no power. The middle one is prop. On many propeller aircraft, you have a lever or a control which changes the angle of the blades on the propeller so that they bite more or less air. Here's a really basic way of thinking about it. Not very scientific, but it worked for me in terms of getting my head around it. The prop control is a bit like gears in a car. If you were to jump in your car, drive all the way down the road in first gear, the engine would be screaming, you would not be going very fast. We change the prop pitch during flight similarly to the way you'd change gears to get more power, I guess, to get more thrust out of that propeller. That's probably a horrible way of describing it, but for beginners like you and I, I think that's fine. The last one, this red scary one, red for scary, is mixture. 
It controls the mixture of air to fuel in the combustion parts of the engine. To get an explosion, you need an adequate amount of oxygen and an adequate amount of fuel for a large bang. If you have too much of one or the other, you won't get a satisfying bang. On the ground, we push this all the way up. That's mixture rich. On the ground, the air is dense. So there's quite a lot of it. So we don't need as much of it compared to the amount of fuel that we're mixing to get a good explosion. As we climb though, and the air thins out, there's less oxygen, less usable air. So we suck in more and more of it. It's called leaning the engine. More and more draw, I guess, on the outside air or the oxygen into the combustion chamber to mix with the fuel to get a satisfying amount of, uh, satisfying reaction and maintain power. Now the way our yoke works, like I said, it's a bit like a steering wheel in a car, except it's limited to 90 degrees. You can only turn 90 degrees to the left or to the right, and unlike the steering wheel in your car, this one goes in and goes out. When you pull it out, the elevators, that would be these bits. When you pull it out, the elevators go up. And so the wind hits those elevators, which are now up in the air, causing the nose of the aircraft to pivot up. Pulling back does not make you go up. It just makes you point up. Bear that in mind. If you push forward, the inverse happens. The elevators go down. So air hits them, tips the plane over, and the nose starts pointing down. Unlike with the pitch, pointing at the ground will typically make you go towards the ground. But pointing up doesn't always make you go up. One of the quirks of flying, I guess. Anyway, without further ado, let us go over to a simulator. I'm going to show you how to hook all these things up, or more specifically, how to make them work in FSX. See you in a second. Okay, so here we are in the sim, and as you can see, I've managed to fit the yoke to my desk. It has a handy clamp underneath the bottom here, which clamps onto pretty much any desk. I've fitted my throttle quadrant to my desk as well. Interestingly, the bracket that fits the throttle quadrant to the desk can be reversed. So you can actually just undo four screws here and have the throttles up here on top of the desk, which is kind of cool. You'll notice also, there's more than enough space here for me to fit my Mad Cat's Strike 7 keyboard, which is great, because I've got access now to all my macros and stuff for flying. That's in a different lesson. On the floor, out of sight, out of mind, are the rudder pedals. All we need to do is actually set this stuff up. You can see we've got a A2A Simulations C172 trainer ready to go, but look, nothing works. Nothing works in the sim at all at this point. So, we go up to the options menu in FSX, go to settings and go to controls. All we need to do is go to control axis, Find the controller we want to set up. So in this case, the, let me just see if I can move that. I can't. The Cessna ProFlight yoke. We're going to set up the yoke then. And we find the axes that we want to bind. So first, the ailerons. Double click on the axis column next to ailerons. And then simply move the control that is the aileron. So ailerons in an aircraft are left and right on the yoke. So we just roll the yoke to the left and to the right. And you can see it says X axis. Click on OK. Now we want to set up the elevator. Elevator is pull back, push forward. So double click once again, pull back, push forward. It says Y axis, we're good to go. Click on OK. Now the throttle quadrant actually connects directly to the yoke. So all of these axes and levers here count as yoke axes. So we need to set up power, prop, and mixture. If you were flying something like a 737, you'd set one of them up as throttle, one up as spoilers, and one up as flaps. Even though there's only three levers here, you can make them do anything you want. It's all done in this customization menu. So, power, first of all. We'll go on down here to throttle. There's the throttle right there. Double click. Move the power lever. Z axis, great. Now we need to go mixture. Sorry, prop will be next. Double click on prop. Move the middle one. And finally, mixture. And move that red lever, and that's all good. Next up, we'll go ahead and set up the rudder pedals. So just from the controller type at the top, drop it down, choose your ProFlight rudder pedals. Mine say SciTech ProFlight Combat rudder pedals, doesn't matter. Now let's set up the left brake. The left brake is just by pressing on the tip of that left rudder pedal. So I press that down and it comes up left toe. Now we set up right brake. And again, that's the opposite one, the right hand pedal. Just press the tip of it, down it goes. And finally, rudder. There's rudder axis right there. Double click it and press the pedals with all your might so that they rotate. There's rudder all set up. Now there's a lot of buttons here that you can bind up as well if you want. And even on the throttle quadrant, there are six buttons underneath the levers here. Let's go ahead and set some up right now. So I would like on the yoke, if we change event category here, drop that down and change it to control surfaces, I would like my flaps to extend incrementally when I press this button on the far right underneath my throttle. So I double click this, press the button, button 19. And I would like them to retract 
incrementally on the up version of that button. There. So button 18 and 19 are set for my flaps. I can carry on, I can set up my gear here if I want to, and so on and so on. You get the basic idea. All that's left now is to go into the sim and make sure this stuff works. Now, A2A's aircraft are very easy to set up if you don't know what you're doing. We'll pretend I don't, so I'm gonna bring up a little menu here and we'll tell it auto start. Now I do know that to start a Cessna I need my mixture lever rich, I need my throttle lever slightly moved forward. It would be very helpful at this point as well just to jump into the cockpit and make sure, whoops, if I can find my key, and make sure that the parking brake, this handle here, is set, which it currently is. So with all that done, let's bring up that menu once again, and we will say auto start. And the engine roars to life. And you can see as I move my throttle lever in real life, it moves in the cockpit as well. Same on my yoke. If I turn my yoke left or right or pull it or push it. And if we pop outside, you can actually see the control surfaces extending as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we are outside. If I turn left, you can see the ailerons turning. If I pull back, the elevator moves up and down and so on. And we did actually set up a couple of buttons here for the flaps. So let's go ahead and extend my flaps by pressing a few times. You can see the flaps are dropping down. And now we'll bring them back up. Very, very easy to set up the SciTech ProFlight yoke, throttle quadrant and rudder pedals, as you've seen. Let me just jump back into my cockpit. Let's take this up into the air because there is one other thing that I didn't explain properly yet and I said I would, and that is why you need a rudder pedal in flight. So, Captain's gonna lock his seat in position. We will increase power, release our parking brake, which we can do with control period or by clicking on it. I'm actually gonna have to go and do control period because my view is not very good right now. There we go. So the brakes are off. Now, rudder pedals steer you on the ground. So as I turn my rudder pedals or press my rudder pedals left and right, you can see the nose of the aircraft is moving left and right. We're at full power now. The speed is coming up. And once the speed gets into the green bar, we could take off. So we'll gently pull back. Very gentle, and up we go. Now I mentioned when I was talking about the uh, controls, the rudder pedal is used in flight as well as on the ground. I'll show you how it works in flight because most people are a little bit shocked by it. In flight, if I press the right rudder pedal, watch. Whoa! If you are in this aircraft, you will be slammed into the left-hand door and feel quite nauseous. Similarly, if I press the left pedal, oh, not quite a roll. A roll is something very, very different, but you can see the effect of those rudder pedals. Now, the reason you actually use them is because of rolling. So let's say I wanted to turn to the right. If I turn to the right, because of the way the ailerons work, the, the aileron that's hanging down would cause more drag, which means the nose would actually yaw the opposite way. You can kind of see it here. If I roll to the right, watch the clouds and the nose. You can see that nose did not go to the right. It kind of just went straight down and wasn't very pleasant at all. That's where we use the rudder pedals and why they're so important. You can get away without them. There is an option in FSX to turn on auto rudder, but if you don't have that, then this is how you use them. So you would roll into a turn like so, and then press on the pedal in the direction of the turn. You can see now the nose tracked around to the right along with the aircraft. And around we go. Actually not doing a very good job, but that's called coordinating a turn. That's why you need rudder pedals, and we'll probably cover stuff like that in a later video. Thanks for watching.